Hey guys, after yesterday's video about the uh, new COVID requirements for residency, let me be very clear about that. Uh, yesterday we had, uh, you know, obviously a lot of people who are very upset about this. I think that's to be expected. I'm not, I'm not really surprised. Um, and, and, but, and I want to just clear up a few things that I think, um, I'm sure most people caught this or are, are aware, but definitely there were a lot of comments made by people who were very upset about this that um, I'm suspicious may have missed some of the, the prescient points. So I just want to cover a few things in detail uh, to make sure that um, people understand uh, what this requirement means, who it applies to, um, and, and just kind of the big picture. And I also had someone who said they contacted, and this is a common story, right, an immigration lawyer in Managua. Everyone always has this immigration uh, lawyer in Managua. Uh, these are famously, you know, people you find online. Um, it's well known that the immigration lawyer in Managua thing is uh, very often where misinformation comes from. It's 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 a well-known thing here that uh, lawyers set up English language websites from Managua to sound like big and official, and they really, not all by any stretch, but there's a lot of them that are well-known and easy to find online, and they're there to just milk your money. And, and not that they won't ever get you through immigration, but this is not a good process. Um, and, and reaching out, especially if they have an English language website, uh, it follows all of our other rules, like real services in Nicaragua don't work in English. Anyone who is working in English, they have so much money to be made by taking advantage of foreigners that uh, you can just assume that that's a, that's a dangerous path to go down. Um, and, and if you're finding them online, I realize for immigration lawyers, that is um, the kind of thing that's like, well, but it has to be for expats. Yes, but it's not for expats before they get here. If they're advertising in English, online, all that stuff, they're trying to catch you before it's appropriate for them to be your lawyer. And while that's fine, that's their business, that's going to lead to probably bad results. It's filtering that people who are doing what they should do, doing their due diligence, uh, being smart about finding a lawyer, haven't gone down a good path. So why would they provide the best services when they're not getting the discerning customers, right? So that's a really common thing. So assume anytime someone goes out and talks to a, a lawyer that they found online before they've moved here, um, that's not really a trusted resource. It's not that they'll be wrong. It's not that they're out to get you, but that is not how you go about doing things. And I hear, I, I, we've heard less of this over time, but it's a lot like the real estate things, right? You don't do that stuff online. You don't reach out and ask these questions in that way. That's not how you deal with it. And I realize that sometimes you need things answered when you're not here yet, right? But there's a, it, it's just going to lead to a ton of information, misinformation. And that's one of the reasons why we have this channel is to protect you from those people, right? There's a lot of predatory people who, not that they're trying to hurt you, but they're trying to get your money. And there's no reason for them to put in a lot of effort into being accurate because what can you do about it? And what difference does it make? If they give you misinformation, it'll be years before it affects you. Maybe it'll change by then. Maybe you won't be working with them by then. Like it just, it, there's no downside to them giving you misinformation. So they're, that's what's cheap and easy. So the, the thing that they said was that there isn't this rule. Um, so I want to address that. So first of all, an immigration lawyer is not an authority. They have no knowledge of this. The immigration lawyers, the top ones in the country, it's not like they got a notification of this. So until someone has a client who gets to this very specific phase of the process, they wouldn't know necessarily unless they watch my show and got that information. We only have that information because we have access to immigration lawyers. I happen to be going through residency and happen to hit this exact phase within the first few weeks of it rolling out and was not already vaccinated. A number of people that we know that have residency have gotten it recently. Uh, they're vaccinated anyway. Uh, everyone I talked to, literally every person who would have fallen into this in my same category was already vaccinated in this way in the country using this vaccine because they voluntarily got it as soon as it was available because it was something that they wanted. I didn't go out seeking it. It just so I, I was a unique character in this particular instance. And we got lucky that we got this information early. But other people didn't have it come up because they already had it. So if they went through residency during this period, they would have just looked at their records, known it was there, may not have mentioned it to them. So it's very likely that uh, not, that a lot of people are just falling through the cracks and you're not getting this information. So it's not surprising that even the busiest immigration lawyers in the country wouldn't be expected to have this information. The one thing you should trust is that your lawyer would tell you that they don't have a way to have this information. So if someone told you that they know this isn't true, you know that they're not trying to give you correct information. They would have to have called uh, medical services and checked in that moment 
So anyone who's just repeating that they, that's, you know that they're not giving you um, or not attempting to give you correct information. So that's the first thing. But so immigration lawyers are not authorities. That's not who you check with, right? Second thing is they told me to go check with someone else at immigration, right? So this under, underscores an important point. Immigration has nothing to do with this, right? Migracion, which is the actual department, does, is a police department. They only have to make sure that you are cleared by National Health Services. That is it. It is a yes or no from National Health Services. During the process, same thing with Interpol. Interpol either clears you or denies you as far as, as being wanted, right? It's a very clear-cut thing. You go, you request that paperwork, and it is given to the National Police in their Department of Migracion, and Migracion just has to have that checkbox. So when you go to Health Services, which everybody knows you have to do, your immigration lawyer must know this, even if they're completely fake, if they had even passing knowledge of this process, they would know that Migracion is not who deals with this, Health Services is. So you, what you have to do during your residency process, right at the end of it, only at the end, so it's only people who've made it all the way to the final paperwork and are just about to submit their final form, you have to, in the last few days, get a health certificate, and in the last few weeks, so remember, I did this earlier this year, this was not a requirement, we got through, we got stalled because of something. We had to renew our paperwork when we renewed a couple days ago. They said, oh, no, brand new requirement. And we talked to many people within uh, the department. Our immigration lawyer was there. Migracion was aware. Everyone's in communications. This is not one person getting misinformation as a fake lawyer in Managua may try to claim. It is, look, don't listen to people who are just posting random, you know, I called some random guy who claims to be a lawyer. He's more, he has more authority than the government. What kind of claim is that? Okay. So talked to... Uh, the nurses, they had some misinformation. They said everyone has to have it. Talk to the doctors. They're like, absolutely not. This does not apply to children. This does not apply to people who are over 60. It does not apply. Okay. And then we talked to the director of the hospital to ensure that we had the right information. They verified it all. They also verified some things like if you're older, you don't have to have it. If you have a medical condition, absolutely don't have to have the vaccine. There's plenty of ways to not have to get the vaccine. If you are completely healthy and you fall into this age range, then yes. Okay. So that's the first piece. Don't listen to non-authority, random claim to be lawyer people. They're probably actually a lawyer, but we don't know that, right? Just that someone said that they're a lawyer and are advertising services uh, that they're trying to make a quick buck on doesn't make them an authority. They don't have the right to tell you what the process is, and they are not the source of that information. They can be a handy use, uh, resource once you're in country, once you've done your due diligence. Yes, absolutely. Have a good lawyer, a good lawyer, an actual lawyer, and uh, one who actually does this process on a regular basis. But do not try to do that from abroad or early. You are, you are absolutely begging, and I say this in everything, real estate, lawyers, everything, you're begging and advertising that you're ready to be taken advantage of. So don't, you're going to get misinformation because you're setting yourself up for it. Don't, that's not a process. Got to be here. You have to do things on the ground. It's just how Nicaragua works. It's unfortunate, but it's true. Okay, now, who does this apply to? Because a lot of people reacted, and I think uh, at least probably half, I'm, I'm kind of guessing, of the people who were super upset about this law, I don't think it applied to them. Now, I understand you can be upset that the law exists, separately from it applying to you. Okay, no, not a problem. But a lot of the people say, specifically, I was looking to retire in Nicaragua, and this is a showstopper, uh, some variation of that sentence. Okay, so I understand that some people retire early. That happens. But let's talk about these ages. Now, remember, children are not affected. If you are not an adult, you're not in consideration for this vaccine. You're not allowed to get it at all. I don't even know if they will give it to you, even if your parents ask for it, right? Not going to happen. They don't want to do that. You can probably find someone who will give it to you, but that doesn't mean they're supposed to. But getting a vaccine you're not supposed to have if you beg for it, not the, not the biggest deal. Okay, that's not important. So children does not apply. It also doesn't apply to people who are over 60, 60 or over. So once you hit 60, no, no problem. You don't, you don't have to prove anything. Well, your age. That's it. No, no uh, vaccine for you. It's not certified. You're set. Right. So when people say retirement, generally, we assume at least 62 or older. I understand there's early retirement and a lot of people come to Nicaragua so you can retire really early, much younger than 60. And I promote that heavily. I talk about how it allows you to come down and retire early. So I totally understand that there could be a lot of you who are looking at early retirement options and are like 45, 55 and 
yeah, you're well under that that uh, age and you may be completely healthy and have no medical reasons to be avoiding the vaccine. If you have a medical reason to avoid the vaccine, assume that you will not have to have it. It's not a problem. I know people who've already verified this. No problem at all. None. Just show your doctor's notes and you're clear, right? So, uh, so it's only people who are 60 or older, but that's missing a very important point, And that is that the process of getting into residency, while you can rush it if you're trying to, and I know people who did from the channel who did this recently and managed to do the whole thing in just a couple months, maybe even less. Great. If your goal is to get it as fast as possible, you can generally make that happen. But if your goal is just to be able to live here and retire and do all those things, you don't want residency under normal circumstances until you have to have it, which generally means very generally, but for the average person, about three years. What that means, because you don't need this until the very, very final step of your residency process, is that if you are 57 or older, then this probably won't apply to you anyway, period. It just doesn't apply under normal circumstances. So I think a lot of the people that were, were very upset about this are actually at an age where they weren't even candidates or likely candidates for this in the first place. So that's very, very important. You have to be 19 to 56 as an age range to have this be a consideration to have to deal with in the first place. Okay. Now, it only applies to people who are going for actual residency, long-term permanent residency. It does not apply to the people with the automatic 180-day residency. That's a separate thing. It does not apply to people who are the permanent tourists. It doesn't apply to the border-run people. It doesn't apply to tourists in general. It doesn't apply to uh, citizens. It is only to residents. And I know that a lot, a lot, a lot of you guys are convinced that you want to be residents. And some of you truly do but not nearly as many as who think that they do. And it's one of the things we try to say all the time is you probably don't actually want residency nearly as likely as you think you do. I, I don't want to say that everyone doesn't want it. Of course, a lot of people do. I do, but my business partner doesn't. He's in the same boat and he doesn't need the vaccine. He's 60, just turned 60. He could do it without the vaccine. He has all the paperwork. He has everything he needs for investor, the best of the residencies, the most powerful, the most flexible, the easiest. He has everything lined up. All he has to do is submit the paperwork. But the requirements of being a resident ongoing, not in, the vaccine isn't part of it, just the cedula process is annoying enough that his normal travel schedule makes it too annoying to file for residency. It makes sense for him to be a permanent tourist because it's just an easier system for him. And when we went to the beach last night, I was hanging out with a bunch of expats talking about this and the number of people who were affected came down to me. I was the only one of the entire pool, kids, retirees, middle-aged, working, not working, all groups. I was the only one who was affected because the only one who's under, under 57 and wants uh, residency and doesn't already have the vaccine anyway, just from normal life, just because people went out and got it. And of those people, even the ones that have residency, some are like, I was thinking about giving up my residency. It's just, it's too much work considering I can do everything without it. And it, it doesn't give me any benefits. Uh, so everyone I know who has residency from our group is looking to give it up. And those that don't have it, none of them are going for it. They don't find it valuable. They find that staying the border run tourist is the easier process. It just, the reality of boots on the ground actually doing the process, it is simpler than the residency for the majority of people. Not everyone. I know some of you have written in and, and mentioned like where you live, what you do, what your lifestyle is like, and why residency makes sense for you. And, and they're correct, right? I'm not saying that those don't exist. I'm not saying that it's not normal to fall into that, but you're not the majority by any stretch. And all of them know they're not the majority. They all know that they're living in remote locations and have unique situations that makes residency make sense for them. And I'm in a unique situation because of the show that residency makes sense for me. But for most of the people who are writing in, I don't think that they want residency. They think they do. Some of them probably do. But the combination of it, you have to actually want long-term residency. You have to want it during the ages that most people are not looking for it. Um, there's just so many things. And then there's the very real possibility that this is not a long-term thing. The idea that, yes, uh, currently the law is permanent, right? Like this is an ongoing thing. You're going to need it again in a year. Yes, that is how it is written right now. The chances that that is going to be the law in three years or five years or whatever, I would say is pretty low because COVID is going to become a thing that no one thinks about. They're going to stop making the vaccine. They're going to be like, no one cares. 
This is, it's past, right? Right now, they just got the vaccine. That's why they're doing it right now. They just got it. So they immediately as a getting it, they, they made it available in this way. But that's it. That is the trigger for why it's available now. Um, the To even have the thought that it's going to last for very long seems incredibly unlikely. It just doesn't make very much sense. They're, they're not requiring it for the flu. They're not requiring it for other things that are similar. They're probably not going to require it for this for that long. But at the moment, they are. So carefully consider all these things. Also, a lot of people said, well, they're really upset that this is mandatory. Nothing like this should be mandatory. There is no way to be clearer about this. In no way whatsoever is this mandatory. This is one, an absolutely tiny sliver of the expats does this apply to. And it is 100% only for people who are voluntarily trying to get a optional residency. That is it. The process of getting a residency is optional even for people who are expats living in the country full-time or full-time-ish. Right? That, that has to be really clear. This cannot be called mandatory. It's mandatory for an optional process, but that makes it optional. Right? Nobody is being forced into this. And someone asks, well, why aren't they doing this to citizens? Because if they did it to citizens, it would be mandatory, right? If they made it, because you can't not be a citizen if that's what you are. That would force people into it. This is purely optional, 100% optional. There's nobody who has to do this. Right now, if you want to get very specific benefits like I want with crossing the border with a car under very specific circumstances, yes, then I have to have it for that optional way of using a car. That is it. That is it. Very important. And some people ask, would this apply to tourists? No, absolutely. It can't apply to tourists. It physically can't because the requirement is specifically a Nicaraguan vaccine, not a vaccine in general. And so there's no way to get that vaccine if you're a normal tourist. If you're a long-term tourist like me and about to get residency, then yes, you will have been here for a long time. You have access to things. You can go do that. If you're a tourist and you just really want the vaccine, yes, I believe you have no problem just stopping into any uh, health center in the country and requesting it. And you'll probably just have to wait in line like everyone else. And you'll probably get it for free. No problem. And uh, if for some reason that's something you need, you want access to the specific uh, vaccine and come to Nicaragua, uh, enjoy a few weeks here, take a little vacation, get a free vaccine. It's probably um, a win-win for everyone, right? If that's something you want. But if this is something you're concerned about, I think the first thing is to remember it's absolutely anything but mandatory. It is the farthest thing from mandatory. The second thing is ask yourself, is there any chance that this would actually apply to you? Thanks. I'll see you this afternoon.